Hello, uh, my name is Darren Barrington Light, and I'm going to take you through what's new in the first feature release of Thermo Scientific Communion CDS, which is version 7.2.6. Um, so I'll start with a quick introduction before we look at the new features. So I'm sure you're already familiar with Communion CDS, the gold standard CDS from Thermo Fisher Scientific, and as we all know, it is the most modern CDS platform available. It's designed to provide intelligent functionality while maintaining the rules of operational simplicity. So what this means, intelligent functionality, means that the software contains smart features to enable you to perform all the tasks you need to do, while operational simplicity is a core design principle which brings the highest levels of ease of use by applying three simple rules to every feature that's added. So these rules are minimize the number of steps that are needed to perform any task, make all steps easy to understand and easy to use, and minimize the time needed to perform any task. By following these three rules, we can ensure everything is fast and intuitive and really deliver ease of use. And obviously we know Chromedian 7.2 was the first CDS to combine not just uh, LCGC and IC, but also mass spectrometry in an enterprise or client server environment. By extending chromium beyond chromatography into mass spectrometry, you can now streamline your chromatography and MS quantitation workflows with a single software package. The MS support is focused on routine and quantitative workflows, which gives our LCGC and ICMS users access to all of the rich quantitative data processing and automation capabilities of chromium. It's the software that made multi-vendor instrument control a must-have for any CDS. We pioneered it, and it still today sets the standard for third-party instrument control, supporting over 525 different modules from 20 different manufacturers. Our unique e-workflow procedures help you streamline your laboratory workflows. These provide a framework for quickly creating sequences that meet your SOP requirements, ensuring the correct methods and reports are used and the sequences structured properly. If you want to learn more about how you help, if you want to learn more about how eWorkflows work and can help streamline your laboratory, a series of webinars are available in our Chromelian Resource Center at thermofisher.com forward slash chromelian. Finally, there is a comprehensive suite of tools that are provided to ensure full regulatory compliance and help you meet data integrity requirements, which of course can now be applied to your MS data too. So before we get into the content of the latest release, I think it's important to quickly explain uh, a recent change in the Chromium release strategy so you can understand why the naming of our releases has changed. So we have two essentially groups of customers. We have one set of customers who are, who are looking for new features or want updates very quickly. They want to get the latest instruments, have the latest and greatest. These tend to be our workstation customers, people who are working in non-regulated areas or, or new regulated customers. And then we have our enterprise customers. These are people running in networks where they want the software to remain stable. They want quick issue resolution and they do want to add new instruments as well. So essentially these two groups as I said, the workstation customers, these are focused on features. These people really kind of want to focus uh, on feature releases so we can quickly um, give uh, access to new tools, new instruments on a sort of six to nine month cycle. And if you want to look at the Microsoft analogy for Microsoft Windows, this would be what we call their current branch. Whereas our enterprise customers, they want this long term stability, the focus on stability. So we have these long term support releases now, and these have a regular um, short-term uh, uh, maintenance updates which just introduce um, fixes for issues. There's no new features introduced at all which means these, these maintenance updates are very quick and easy to uh, validate and get on the system and make sure that your system is robust and, and it's uh, not having any issues. Um, we do, if we add instruments when well, we can, we uh, uh, will always add instruments to this but it may be that it's just the driver, the actual new features that may be implemented into the feature release are not in the uh, an enterprise at the you know, on the long-term support release simply to obviously that adds huge validation effort um, and the long-term release cycle was roughly two to three years there'd be a new one out and again looking at the Microsoft Windows analogy this would essentially be analogous to their long-term servicing branch so to kind of make that a bit more graphical you can see our um, every you know two three years we have a, a major release um, and then there'll be feature releases in between that every six to nine months. So you get a regular update on, on new features coming out, new instruments. 
And then every so often we also will have a co co um, co coordinating with each major release is a long term support release. Um, with those, those then they sit stably and have regular maintenance updates going on. So those are released again every two to three years in, in coordination with the uh, major releases. So yeah, so this is the feature release 7.2.6, which is the first in this new kind of um, new description, the new release strategy. It was released in August 2017, and there are some resolved issues in there. And um, if you want to know exactly about all the released issues, all resolved issues, all the all the details on beyond what I'm going to talk about uh, today, then please you know, get get hold of a copy of the release notes, and you can see them all there. Okay, so what is new in Chromium 7.2.6? Well, we'll look at the, what's new and updated for instruments, and then we can go and look at what's new in all the features. So yeah, starting with the instruments. Um, the new instrument, the big instrument that's been uh, introduced with this release is the ISQ EC single quad mass spectrometer. This is a native Chromelian driver, the first mass spectrometer to be delivered with a native Chromelian driver. So it has a very, very tight integration with Chromelian. And obviously we are able to bring all of that operational simplicity which Chromelian provides to this mass spectrometer. Um, and the other key thing is the auto tuning for the mass spec is now contained within the sequence. So all of that is done from within Chromelian. Um, and a lot of the features which have been released with 7.2.6 have also been released with this mass spectrometer in mind. Um, the other big introduction that is the uh, Market Marks International Thermal Desorber. There's four models have been added, so they now have full control within Chromelian. There's also a few updated drivers, so the Vanquish uh, Horizon Binary Pump has a new leak test added for that. The Trace 1110 GC has a, a FBT, FPD detector added, and there's a Trace 1300 GC, which has some, some improvements around keyboard unlocking, uh, being able to acquire data at a non-zero time and also uh, around instrument method improvements. Okay, so what are the new features? That's it for the instruments. Um, I say these, these feature releases tend to be uh, smaller and but coming up more, more frequently. So what, what do we do? So with the uh, features, the first one we want to talk about is the enhanced fraction collection. So um, we've extended the fraction collection now to cover multiple channels and then have more parameters available. So if you haven't seen it before, this is the fraction collection wizard in Chromelian. And um, what you will do is on the right hand side here, you see a preview. So if there's an injection in the sequence already, as you go through the instrument method wizard, it'll pick up that injection and preview what your um, fraction collection will look like. If it doesn't have a, if you don't have an injection there right now, you can use the bottom in the button in the right hand corner there to say select an injection. You can load up any chromatogram. And as you go through and change the settings for your fraction collection, it will simulate exactly what the fraction collection is going to look like. So you can see on the left hand side here, we're collecting by peak. And as you see on the right hand side, it's super showing you exactly which peaks are going to be collected, which tubes they'll be in and which fraction they're part of. So in any case, when you go through the next step of the wizard, it's now setting up things like maximum tube volumes um, and the delay time, which is the set, obviously, the time it takes from the uh, peak to get from your flow cell to the point where it drips out of the uh, end of the tube into your vial, into your collection vial. Those also will affect um, maybe the number of fractions or in per tube or whatever it is. So that would again would also update in the preview if, if a fraction now suddenly went over two tubes. And then we get into the uh, actual setting of the parameters. So the initial view you get on the left hand side here is the key, the main conditions that you have, the key ones um, to be able to set up some basic fraction collection. Um, and as you change those six, for example, say if you change, for example, the peak start threshold, which we've done here, we've changed it to a much higher level. You can see on the right hand side, we now see this bar showing where the peak start threshold is. And you can see that the first and last peaks are no longer collected and it's updated the, uh, the actual um, amount of the peak that's being collected on the other peaks as well. That's all, those bars have shifted slightly to the right. Um, and then the new bit, the very, this is the newest bit, is the extra channels. So as I add another channel, you can see now the simulation now allows for that. It now shows me the second channel as well. So it's booking for peaks that are on both channels and picking those up and showing me where they're gonna be collected. Um, and I can set the uh, do the settings differently. So it may be that my second channel may be of FLD or something like that, right? So I may have different detectors or I may just want to be doing it with different wavelengths. Um, and I have options, obviously, the channel evaluation I can do um, all, so it has to be detected in all channels, or I can do it in either channel, or I can, you know, specifically just have one channel, right? I can, I can have multiple channels set up here. 
The other thing I can do is in the bottom left hand corner, so there's a little button that says show advanced settings. If I click on that one, I can now access all of the different uh, fraction parameter, parameter uh, settings. Um, so I can have a lot more control and see every single parameter that's available to me and really kind of go to town and um, make sure I get everything working exactly. Of course, as I make changes on the left here, it'll be reflected and updated in the preview. So it's much, much more easy and quicker to uh, get your fraction collection working as you would like, rather than having to do lots of injections and seeing what happens. Okay, so that's a really nice enhancement there to the fraction collection. Another really big and a really nice enhancement that's been added is email notifications. So with 7.2.6, you can now get uh, email notifications. So when a sequence uh, finishes or is aborted or is cancelled, uh, you can get an email. So obviously to do that, each user now needs uh, an email address added to them. So in the user management, each user will now have an email address. And then you can set up in the sequence settings um, who will when, when to send a notification and who to send it to. Okay, so if the sequence finishes, if it's aborted, if it's cancelled, and of course, so you can also include the user who started the sequence in case it's aborted by someone else or someone does something at the time, and maybe even the user who created the sequence, which may not be the same person that starts it. So you can now get a notification of what's going on if something changes, or, or even if your just sequence is, is completed. As part of the eWorkflow editor, this is also um, accessible. So if you click on this enable notifications and then configure notifications, you will end up with the same screen as you just saw, or the same options anyway, um, to send notifications and set, specify those as part of your eWorkflow. So when it creates a sequence, it will automatically put those notifications in for you. Um, finally, you can also now get notification um, if your license is expiring or if it's in the grace period. So if it's gone into NFP mode and it's going to run out, you can now get uh, a notification to remind you to um, update your license if you're running with a temporary license um, or at least uh, get a notification that your grace period is about to expire because you're in NFP mode. Um, as I said, some of the uh, features in here, there's quite a few features in here for mass spectrometry, especially particularly with the release of the ISQ EC. So um, we can now use um, your mass spectra to do peak tracking and peak confirmation. So as we used to do the peak, ident peak um, component match previously, you could do the UV spectrum. You can now pick a mass spectrum and look for that in your chromatogram and track your peaks and confirm your peaks via the mass spectrum. We can also import data directly from Thermo Scientific Biopharma Finder. So you, when you've got your peptide list built up in Biopharma Finder, you can now import that directly into Chromelion to build up your processing method. With all of the transitions and everything we need to make that, that work straight away. And then finally, we also have a new uh, variable internal standard calculation, which is mainly required by ASTM methods. So it's now a response ratio versus an amount ratio, which is enabled simply by a single tick box in the processing method. Um, this is the default for new sequences. Um, obviously, if you uncheck that box, it'll go back to the, uh, the previous calculation, which is response ratio times sample amount versus standard amount. So um, yeah, there's a new, new variable internal standard calculation available as well. This is again, as I said, for the mass spec stuff. So another thing that's been added to the processing method is the ability to look for target masses and, and adducts during screening. So if you're working with a high res accurate mass spectrometer, you can add a target formula or a target mass and also uh, look for adducts, positive or negative adducts within your traces um, and identify those. And of course, it's then important to be able to display them on the trace. So when you have a hit, um, we can now show that mass uh, detected mass on the spectrum above the peak. We've also introduced flexible scaling on the y-axis for your MS component plots, because previously it just auto-scaled, which means that some of the, um, to the biggest peak essentially, which meant that some of the chromatograph, the actual traces came out a bit small. And now you can um, have more control over that uh, y-axis and actually set the, specify the zooming um, by auto-scaling it or um, basically on a reference injection or a particular formula. So you can basically have more control over the, the scaling of that y-axis, which allows you to see better what's happening in your component plots. We also have a new um, report variable, which is relative standard error, which is now useful. You can just report that directly out into your reports. And finally, um, there is now support for Microsoft Windows 10 Pro 64 bits. So now it's now fully supported by Chromelion. It's validated and tested. So you can now use this to run Chromelion. 
The other thing that was released with in simultaneous to uh, 7.2.6 is the Chromelian Express Open Access software. So this is a walk-up interface. It's very clean, it's very streamlined, it's very simple to use, but it leverages the full power of Chromelian CDS. So it's, it's linked into the user management, it's linked into the instrument control, or, or the data processing and reporting powerful features that you'd expect there. And of course, because it's linking into Chromelian, every instrument that Chromelian can control, including mass specs, can be used with this. Um, so therefore, as I say, it supports the IC, LC, GC, and the MS analysis of each one. You can enable the email notifications to let you know it's finished. Um, and it does have its own management console um, to allow you to make sure you to, to help you customize that and make sure the information is set up there. Um, of course, to, to manage this there inside the Chromelian administration console, um, we have some new privileges that are created. So there's one around allowing the users to even use Chromelian Express. And then there's one to allow users to manage the Chromelian Express. So how does it look? So when you open Chromelian Express, it's a separate application that runs. You can, you can log in with your user, your, your normal Chromelian user uh, ID and your roles are now specified. So you can now log in as you would do normally. And it then presents you with the option to get the list of e-workflows that are available to you based on your login. And when you select the e-workflow that you're going to run, the analysis you want to run, it then displays in the bottom box the instruments that are available for that analysis. It gives you the status of the instrument, whether it's running, whether it's monitoring, whether it's idle, the wait time that you would have to wait before that would be available to you. And it also knows the number of injection positions that are available in the auto sampler. So essentially now you just select your instrument that you want to run this analysis on and click next. And then if there are some custom sequence variables to be added, they will be prompted. The user will now be prompted to add the custom sequence variables before then. Now we have to say how many samples are we adding? So the maximum number of bars I can add is 15, which is limited by the e-workflow. So I'm saying I've got five samples to add in and obviously I can then edit the sample names on the left here. Now, if there are also at this point, custom injection variables to be added, um, something that's specific to the, each injection. These would also appear in this table here and it could be edited by the user. At the bottom here, if it hasn't been predefined by the uh, management of the Chromium Express, you can also then decide, decide to uh, get notifications of emails to print automatically print the report or automatically export the results based on the settings in the Chromium report. Again, once I've done that, I click next and it now says Please go and put the samples in these positions on the auto sampler. And once I've done that, I click submit in the bottom right there. It submits the sequence. It tells me when it's expecting the sequence to start and also when it expects it to finish. And because obviously this one was, uh, there was no idle, it was ready to go straight away. The sequence is then in Chromelian and it is running. Obviously I don't have to open Chromelian to do this. I'm just showing you that the sequence is created and running in Chromelian immediately. Obviously, if you'll set it up to automatically export it, then notify you, you would get the notification the sequence is finished. You can go to the export folder and pick up the results. So again, accessing and you know, using the whole power of Chromelian from a very simple implement interface just to really kind of, you know, get runs going but without even needing to know how to use Chromelian. So yeah, so Chromelian 7.2.6 has several in a couple of new instru updated instruments, um, a few um, new and improved features around chromatography and, and some for mass spec and the Chromelian Express open access interface. Uh, of course, you know, again, I believe they reinforce Chromelian's position as the gold standard CDS, and it still is the only CDS to deliver both separation and MS in the enterprise environment. So finally, if you want more on Chromelian, want to find out more, please go to our website resource center at thermofisher.com forward slash Chromelian where we do have an app that you can download with over 70 videos on various features of Chromelium. And also our mascot Charlie has his own Facebook page where you can connect and share and follow his adventures as he travels the world. If you're on Facebook, I would encourage you to connect with Charlie as we do post events and tips and tricks there. So that's it from me. Thank you for listening and goodbye for now.